I just think that brighter days are ahead for Brian Burns. I did actually try to go out and get Brian Burns for mm. two 2024 third round picks. Mm. The manager no, in the you. XFL said no thank you. How did he so, say it though? He said I value him a lot higher than I'm that. I'm saying accent wise. Yeah, I can't. I'm not going to try the Boston accent <laughs> to, to make Lauren crash his car off a bridge <laughs> in disgust. It's the IDP show. Now you know. Welcome to the IDP show. I'm your host, Josh Raymer, joined in the Soul Shack this afternoon. On my left, Bobby Reynolds. Bobbo, how are you this afternoon? I'm great, Joshy. It's a rainy afternoon here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. The fog was like something out of a horror movie this morning. Mm-hmm. But we're here. Mm-hmm. We made it. I was really scared. Nothing can keep us down mm-hmm. except for illness, which has sure. unfortunately come knocking for Addie. Uh-huh. Uh, that's why we had to pivot a little bit for this episode. It could be golfing, though. That's he's true. Kinda, kinda Do we lying. know that he's homesick? It's true. It's a good. We need a it picture. is raining, but I don't, that wouldn't stop him either. He's going to do the whole, like, uh, put the earphone yeah. things in his nose as, like, uh, he's in the hospital type of thing. You ever seen that I, picture? I thought you were going to say do glasses and a fake mustache he so we that. wouldn't recognize him on the sure. golf course. Yeah, that's With, possible. like, an umbrella hat. And a mustache. And a mustache. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, yes, <laughs> we are doing a little bit of a pivot. We were originally going to do a 2024 rookie primer. That will be next week, Lord willing, and the Crick Don't Rise. Yeah. And uh, we're going to do some buy-sell hold today, Bobo. It's good. It's a uh, need to give me and Adam another week of, uh, of rookie kind of dive. It's a fun class. I don't know how much you've dug into it, but um, the defensive ends, there's going to be a couple linebackers. There's going to be some really fun corners. I um, haven't dug into the safety class quite yet, but um, – yeah, man, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see at the Combine how some of these edges test. I think you're going to see a guy like a Chop Robinson uh, maybe elevate in the NFL draft if he tests well. We've got Dejon Markham, you know, just an up-and-coming uh, cornerback in the league. It's uh, it's going to be a fun year for rookies. We have Dejon Markham, but we don't have Deadam Markham there today. There you so, go. Yeah. Well done. Addy will be back, but yes, we are going to do all sorts of rookie content. We've got some really fun episodes planned for you all, digging into both rookies, free agency. Um, you know, we're looking ahead, Bobo. Dynasty off season's in full swing, and mm-hmm. we are all about 2024 at this point. How do you handle the uh, the Colts off season stuff right now? Do you want to see it? Do you care? I'm seeing a lot of Ram stuff, and she's like, "All right, I don't." I'm yeah, kind of past it I would point. only care at this point if we were in the coach or GM search. Okay. And we're not. Yeah. So I don't really care. Yeah. You. This is just kind of, unless you're looking for a new coach or a new GM, this is a quiet time of year. And yeah. then once we get closer to the draft, you know, the combine is really when I start to like pay attention to what are the mock drafts saying for the Colts and stuff like that. Yeah. They're starting to get fun for the Colts. I know. There's lots of different fun places with maybe y'all taking a. Wide receiver? Do you take an edge? Do you take a tight end? I maybe saw Brock Bowers in one yeah, mock. I think that I, was DJ's mock. Yeah, um, the Rams are weird right now because the same defensively. Um, Raheem Morris has had a lot of uh, first and second interviews, and in my opinion, I'm happy to see him go. I think that defense has been it's been okay, but he's a little bit more of that bend don't break mentality, and it's kind of frustrating to watch. You just kind of got to outscore whoever you're playing that week. So. Um, would it be a loss? Probably, but I feel like McVay would probably bring somebody else in. I've heard Brandon Staley's name kind of floated yeah. a little bit, which would be interesting. I could see him in Miami as well. Oh, Big yeah. Fangio out the door That's true. on the way to Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, coaching, shakeups, we're going to. It's going to be a busy offseason. Yeah, we'll be talking a lot about that this offseason as well. We've had, I believe, five head coaches hired now. Yep. Uh, uh, we've had Ger- Gerard Mayo mm-hmm. and Antonio Pierce elevated. Um Antonio Smart. Pierce was the interim yeah. in Las Vegas, and Rod Mayo was kind of the coach in waiting, actually written into his contract mm. what that was, he would be the next head coach. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What That's was, why they didn't have to interview anyone. How many years did Pierce get? You I'm know? not sure. Okay. Yeah, I haven't It'd seen be the interesting to see yet. the money and the years behind that one. Of course, Jim Harbaugh landed with mm-hmm. the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Titans go with um, Callahan mm-hmm. from the Bengals. Yeah. And then just now, today, the Panthers have hired uh, – Canales or Canale? I haven't seen this. Um, it's the Bucks offensive yep. coordinator. Wow. Yeah. So not bad. Yeah. I mean, some interesting hires for sure. I think it seems like both Callahan and the Bucks offensive coordinator mm-hmm. both are sort of like that high energy mm-hmm. guys yeah. respond really well to them. Mm-hmm. They've obviously have a track record of success. 
you know, saying that the – I'll look up the Bucks guy's name. I know I'm butchering it. But mm-hmm. he revived Baker Mayfield's career yeah. in Tampa Bay this year. He was working with Geno Smith in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And then the Bengals have been a top-flight offense now, you know, under Joe Burrow. So Did you watch any good morning football this morning? I did not. Uh, I saw Kyle Brandt's tweet about what he was saying about Harbaugh. And I don't really understand – I don't keep up with NCAA stuff, honestly. So I don't really know – the stuff that's allegedly gone on there with Harbaugh and Michigan and all that kind of stuff. But um, Brant went crazy for Harbaugh, just talking about how he has taken the most, um, you know, misrun, uh, misorganized uh, situations that he's been put in. I guess it was Stanford first, then he went to San Francisco, and then he went to his alma mater in Michigan. Just took teams that had just – you know, one, two, three win seasons and completely turn it around the next year. I think Kyle Brandt basically said that he would put the over under at like 11 wins next year for the Chargers. I mean, I think he's going to see that 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 team is not going to be very good because they're so hamstrung by the salary cap. They're going to have to make some big cuts and they're getting older. Yeah. I mean, that team is going to have to strip it down to the studs of Herbert Derwin, um, you know, the, the tackle there, uh, uh, Rayshon Slater, yeah, yeah. and that's basically it. I mean, Eckler, All Keenan, Mike old. Williams, Joy Bosa, Khalil Mack. I mean, you're Eric Hendricks. I think you're going to see yeah, Dayon Henley. A lot of big names traded and cut. So I think that's going to be a talent poor team. Yeah. In 2024, outside of Herbert and those other pieces we mentioned, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think Harbaugh will build that thing back up the right way. Who are the two steam two teams still withstanding that haven't hired a head coach yet? So there were nine openings, I think. Okay. So we've still got it was Atlanta. Brian Brian Callahan and Dave Canales uh, right. were the the guys that were hired by the um, Titans and Panthers mm-hmm. respectively. So uh, we've still got some openings. Atlanta is still open. Um, you think that's Belichick? I mean. Why they've has it not been they've interviewed yet? 14 people wow. for this job. Wow. So, um, I don't know. They brought Belichick back in for a second interview. Vrabel's still out there. Yeah. Um, Dan Quinn, Seattle, mm-hmm. is still open. I think I think Dan Quinn will end up being Seattle's head coach and mm. I think I think it'll end up uh, it might be Vrabel mm-hmm. in Atlanta. It'd be weird to have two Tennessee guys in a row, but I think if it was going to be Belichick it would already be Belichick, and yeah. from what I'm hearing, it sounds like maybe Arthur Blank wants to go a different direction. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. The Atlanta job is sort of a question mark in my mind if at this point. If you're the Titans, were you ready to move on from Vra- Vrabel? No. Uh, Vrabel you got to be happy to see him leave. Vrabel the... was not the problem. I think there was some power struggle issues okay. going on there, and I think you know Vrabel didn't want to tear things down and rebuild around Levis, and Rand yeah. Carthon, the GM, was happy to do that. And so Amy Strunk was the owner. She said, we've got Will Levis. Yeah. We need to get younger. We need to rebuild. We've got this quarterback. Do. And yeah. I think Vrabel, I think that's what they butted heads over. And ultimately, that's what got Vrabel fired. As an AFC South uh, contributor there, you got to be happy to see him go. Yes. He's I'm, a great, great coach. He was a great coach. I think he'll get one of these jobs. Yeah. Seats are filling up quick, mm-hmm. um, but I think he would make sense in Atlanta. I, I'd be surprised if he didn't land one of these jobs. I was surprised that uh, McCarthy hung on down there in Dallas after the way that they went out and um, that Jerry Jones didn't maybe shake it up and try to bring a guy like Rabel in. They just like to stay in the news and you know stay at the top of the trending. And uh, I don't know. McCarthy had a great year, but, man, the way they went out was pretty nasty. So the other opening is the Washington Commanders. That's right. And That's I would right. say Ben Johnson is okay. going to be the one for that one. That's interesting that um, I wonder if B enemy has – I'm sure he's interviewed for that. Um, he did. You know, with him being the OC there, I kind of thought that that was a gradual uptick from him going from Kansas City to Washington and then maybe for him to be the head coach there. But, you know, some of these teams and organizations have different mind – you know, mindsets than we do. Well, they just hired their GM, of course, new ownership group yeah. uh, with Josh Harris. So I think they want to get a quarterback at the number two overall pick. They want to get this brilliant offensive mind. Mm-hmm. I think Ben Johnson could have probably gotten hired last offseason. I think he'll get this job. Yeah. I think it's the most ap- attractive job Yeah. just because you've got new ownership, not afraid to spend money. You've got a new GM in place. You've got, I think, the most effective cap space in the league and the number two overall pick. Yeah. I mean, and a division that's pretty good, but it's okay. It's 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 decent, but winnable. It's, yeah, it's it's very much winnable if you get the right coach and quarterback in place. I mean, we saw what happened with the Texans. Yeah. You can do that. 
NFL draft should be really fun this year. It should indeed. Well, let's talk about buy, sell, hold, kicking it back to the old school days of the Big Three IDP podcast. This has been one of our favorite segments for a long time. And today we are doing a pending free agent edition where we've basically taken some of the top defensive free agents to be, and a lot of these guys will be franchise tagged. They will be re-signed, so they might not hit the open market. But as of right now, there are some juicy names that are pending free agents. And if you'd like to see what that list looks like, go over to theidpshow.com. We just dropped Adam's free agency tracker yesterday that is free for everyone to view. And uh, it's not rankings. It's just a list of the top defensive guys sorted by points per game. So the rankings will be something similar, and we'll have a rankings article article coming out for the free agents later in February. Who's writing that article, Josh? Well, you'll have to wait and find Uh-oh. out, Bobo. You'll have to wait and find out. In the middle of announcements week, we've had a lot of really fun, exciting announcements. Mm-hmm. 2024 is going to be our best year yet. We're recording this here on Thursday. We just announced Jason King from DLF is joining our team. He joins Scott Soltis uh, as a new uh, contributor on the article side. Mm -hmm. And then Steve Falco is the new host of the IDP Trade Show. Mm -hmm. Johnny the Greek is the new host of IDP Bets. Mm -hmm. We've got one more big announcement coming on Friday. One more shockwave. Make sure you're tuned in to Twitter.com or X.com or whatever the hell you call it to uh, (laughs) find that announcement tomorrow around noon central time but let's jump in here Bobo you have graciously put together a trio of players at different positions for us to buy sell or hold so let's kick things off at safety with some big names buy sell hold Antoine Winfield Jr. CJ Gardner Johnson and Kyle Duggar Bobo what say you buy sell hold man this is a tricky one um I'm going to sell Antoine Winfield um, just off of the hope that somebody comes and gives me a King's Ransom. Um, I don't know, you know, I think we talked last podcast about um, a couple players who might have been worth a first-round pick. Uh, I think it was Roquan Smith's name was brought up, and then Antoine Winfield was also brought up as well. Um, If you can get a first for him in 2024, 2025, you doing a 2026 first for Antoine Winfield? No, that's too far out. Too far out. You really no. just hold Winfield. The value of that to you is just, it's not nothing, but yeah. it's minimal. Yeah. Right? It's just so far out in the future that it just, it doesn't even have a lot of, tr- of trade value in terms of like moving up in the 2025 draft yeah. or the 2024 draft. Yeah. I think you can move up with 2025 picks. Yeah. 2026. Um, Too far gone. I would rather just hold on to Winfield. Um, I did a my first little rookie mock with a couple guys um, in the XFL today. And, um, man, the rookie wide receiving class is really, really deep. So if you can trade an Antoine Winfield for a first in 2024, I would absolutely do that. Um, CJ Gardner Johnson is probably the guy that I am going to buy. Um, just because you're coming off a year where he was injured, people aren't going to be hip to the fact that his, you know, points per game were influenced by him. Maybe, you know, the, the points per game versus the end of the year, uh, points are going to be two completely different things. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to see not his gonna name show up on the high. top 24 yeah. safety. You sort by points scored. So that's just a smart type of thing. And then Kyle Duggar is the one that I'm probably going to sell, even though Kyle Duggar to me is interesting in dynasty. Now you're freed from the Belichick wings. You get to actually play more than whatever the snap percentage he's played over the last four years there in new England and dealing with Belichick's weird defensive backs, who he's going to start or the McCordys or whatever from one week to the next. Um, um, so I am intrigued by him a little bit, um, but he's not somebody that I'm really holding on to tightly. So you got two cells in there. Do I really? Yes, you were going to sell Winfield and sell Duggar. So okay, hold one of them boys. Uh, sure, I'll hold Duggar. Okay. I'll hold Duggar. So that, we, that makes more sense. We just flip flop basically because I said I'm holding Winfield. Okay. Now, if you can get a first for him, bye bye. Mm-hmm. But I just don't think you're going to get fair market value for a DB. Um, you know, and Winfield's been great his whole career, yeah. but 17.9 points per game. I don't know how many people want to pay that sticker price. And so I'll just hold him. I, I would rather just hold him if I'm going to get less than what I think he's worth. I agree with you. CJ Gardner Johnson, 12.9 points per game. Uh, big time buy mm-hmm. because he's going to be on a new team more than likely. Um, it, you know, Detroit, not only was he hurt, but we saw a lot of guys relevant in that defensive oh. backfield. Brian Branch. Fetu Malafonwu, mm. right? So I don't know how much there is left on the bone for C.J. Gardner-Johnson. So mm. I'm excited for him to 
hopefully get a good deal and a good landing spot. Yeah. But he's my buy. And then, yeah, I think Kyle Duggar is the sell because you have, you know, also question marks with Gerard Mayo, but new hope. Yeah. So I'm looking at the question marks of, well, what is his, what does his role look like? What if he lands on a new team? I, I, you know, I was listening to the underdog football show yesterday and they mentioned both Winfield and Duggar as almost no brainer franchise tag guys. Mm -hmm. So I think both of them will be back with their current teams, but I'm, I don't know until, until proven otherwise, I kind of assume that Gerard Mayo is just going to be similar to Belichick on the defensive side of things. Yeah. So I think I'd rather sell hope to the other managers in my league. Mm -hmm. Look, this is a guy that had 11.7 points per game, 106 tackles. Mm -hmm. He's got a new defensive coordinator. Belichick's gone yeah. and see if you can get something for him. But yeah, so I'm, Holding Winfield, buying C.J. Gardner-Johnson, and selling Kyle Duggar. Let's which, move. which of these guys would you like to see stay at their team or leave? I think I'd like to see both Duggar and Winfield stay mm -hmm. and C.J. Gardner-Johnson go that somewhere else. Makes perfect sense. So let's talk linebacker. Very juicy trio here. Levante David, Bobby Wagner, Frankie Louvu, buy, mm. sell, hold, Bobbo, David, Wagner, and Louvu. Yeah, um... You got to probably sell Levante David. 133 tackles, four and a half sacks. Now, what do the Bucks do in 2024 is a huge question mark. Do they continue to roll out Baker Mayfield and, um, you know, try to franchise tag Mike Evans and then just run it back again to see what they have? I don't know, but Levante David is 34 years old. That's also in um, Adam's list of free agents at the idpshow.com. Their age is in there as well. Um, so Levante David is the one that I'm going to sell kind of for the same thought process as um, Antoine Winfield. I think that both of those guys off of two pretty epic seasons, if you can get a good return for them, I mean, David is a whole lot closer to the end of the, his career than the beginning. Um, I'm going to hold Bobby Wagner just because that's what you do with a guy like Bobby Wagner. He is an Aaron Donald, uh, Luke Keekley, a TJ Watt, a Miles Garrett type of category to me, Max Crosby, uh, Nick Bosa. Uh, you have these guys, you ride them forever. If somebody comes and offers you something stupid, absolutely trade them. But um, Wagner, 183 freaking tackles, three and a half sacks, 15.6 points per game. Um, he's just a guy that when he hangs it up, I'm still happy that he's on my squad. I uh, just eat it and move on. And then Frankie Louvu has the most ambiguous, probably situation going into free agency. Um, will another savvy team bring in a guy like Frankie Louvu? I have to feel like 125 tackles, five and a half sacks. Some GMs are going to be intrigued by the numbers. I just don't quite know that the play of Frankie Louvu. Um, moving forward is going to be as good as what we've already seen. So I don't know. He's a skeptical buy. I think you're going to have other managers that are probably going to be ready to sell. So maybe you can get him at a little bit of a discount. I don't know. He's a, he's a gray area for me right now. Yeah. He reminds me a little bit of a Caden Ellis situation where it's a linebacker with some pretty prolific pass rushing upside. So he was my buy as well. 125 tackles, five and a half sacks, 12.3 points per game. So I'm buying Luvu. I think that he is one of those players that a smart defensive coordinator, GM, head coach is going to scoop up in free agency and, and plug into a situation that allows him to flourish. And then I just flip-flopped. I'm going to sell Wagner and hold Levante David. Mm -hmm. I mean, Levante David was so good this oh year. Gosh. I mean, playing some of his best football in his, what, age 34 season? Yep, 34 so years old. So I think he's the guy I'm happy to ride off into the sunset with. Same as Wagner, but for this exercise, I'll sell the guy that um, was just a little lower in points per game. And mm -hmm. I think Levante David, reading the tea leaves, I think he'll be back with the Bucks. I think he'll probably take a team-friendly deal to stay in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to run that thing back. I think they're going to franchise tag either Winfield or Mike Evans, bring back Baker, bring back Levante David, and see if they can win the South again in 2024, which they might. And there were no signs showing that Levante David was um, was regressing in terms of you know age at all. He he was amazing this year. But I wanted to pull up Frankie Louvu's PFF numbers. Um, so in 2023, he finished with a 78.5 grade um, overall defensively. He had a 74 uh, grade in run defense. He had a 50 tackling grade, but he also had a 90.1 pass rush grade. So 
Um, all of those were better, um, except for the run defense, than 2022. So, I don't know, man. I think Frankie Louvu could find – I think he's going to make a little bit of money this offseason. I think offseason. he is. I think he's going to be one of those kind of under the radar, maybe for folks who aren't into IDP, like, who's this Frankie Louvu yeah. guy? Getting? Only 27 years old. I mean, so – what was Caden Ellis? Caden Ellis is probably a little younger than Luvu when he hit the market last year. And I think I think he got like a three-year, $22 million deal, I'm pretty sure. Caden Ellis is 28. Okay, so they were about the same age. Mm-hmm. So I could see a Caden Ellis-type deal for Frankie Luvu. Um, dude's just a playmaker, a little banged up this past season. Frankie Luvu have a better 2024 than Caden Ellis did. 2023 I think so I know Kate Nellis was a little bit banged up he missed some time um but I think Luvu is probably a better player than Kate Nellis I think so too. and you've seen way more I mean Kate Nellis was paid based off of a half a season mm-hmm. five games where he just went ham um and had a ton of sacks Frankie Luvu has now several years of data mm-hmm. uh, showing that he's a pretty decent linebacker I agree let's move to defensive line and buy sell hold Justin Matabike Christian Wilkins and Leonard Williams. I'll go first on this one, Bob. Yes, sir. So we are going to sell Justin Matabike just because of the sacks, mm-hmm. right? 13 sacks, 56 tackles, 14.4 points per game. I just could see the sacks regressing yeah. in a big way, coming off of four, you know, 13, his career high mm-hmm. by far. Uh, they speculated on the underdog football show. They think he'll be back in Baltimore, mm. um, which would be great. But I think it's just really good when you can cash out on a guy that mm. came from semi obscurity to finish as the D tackle two by yeah. big three scoring. So I'm always going to fade this sort of outlier production from guys, especially ones that rely on interceptions or sacks. Um, and then Christian Wilkins is going to be my buy because I think there is a chance that. Um, the Dolphins might have to move on from Christian Wilkins. They may not be able to bring this guy back. They're in a little bit of cap hell. Mm -hmm. I think there's been speculation. Do they let Jalen Ramsey go? Uh, Maybe one of these edge rushers gets traded. Of course, that's a hard thing to do with both of them on IR (laughs) right now. That's true. But they're going to have to make some moves. They're in a little bit of cap trouble. So Christian Wilkins could be on the way out. And he, if he hits the market, man will get an outrageous sum of money. Mm-hmm. And then Leonard Williams is just my whole, just because I don't think you're going to get anything for the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, 62 tackles, five and a half sacks, 9.5 points per game. So nobody's excited about Leonard Williams. Yeah. I'd rather just hold on to him as like a D tackle two mm-hmm. bye week fill-in type of option. Yeah. Um, wow, those are good. Those are really good. I'm probably going to also hold Leonard Williams just because I don't feel like there's a ton of value in trying to buy him or trying to sell him right now. Um, I'm going to flip him just for the sake of argument. Let's sell Christian Wilkins. Um, maybe off of the same premise of Justin Matabique that um, – 13 sacks for um, Justin M is pretty awesome. I mean, Adam was talking about it last podcast that, you know, are we going to see another season like that? I don't know. Are we going to see another season with 64 tackles and nine sacks out of uh, Christian Wilkins? That's a lot. That's nine sacks is a lot. You know, that um, Vic Fangio defense had Christian Wilkins really busy. Vic Fangio is gone. Now we're going to see a new home for Christian Wilkins. I'm maybe selling off of the same premise that, um, that you would Justin M. I think... You, did you just say that you think Baltimore retains? It seems likely. I think, um, man, that would be so fun. I think Justin and M is uh, is prime for a good couple of uh, D tackle years. I think for, he's going to be solid, yeah. especially if he stays in Baltimore. Yeah, he's just not going to be D tackle too, probably. So let me tell you, Justin M's last. Uh, I'm saying Justin M because Matabuque, Matabuque, whatever you want to say. Or Matabukake. We if really you're Johnny yeah, the Greek. Johnny the Greek. We really don't know how to say it, but. The pass rush grades are really good. Uh, 75 overall grade, um, a 77 pass rush grade. You know, Justin M, man, 13 sacks sounds like a lot, but would you be surprised at all to look up next year and see that he has nine or 10 sacks? No, I would not. I don't think he's going to regress to like a three, four sack no. year, but I don't know that he's going to put up another 13. Yeah, I mean, we saw it with Quentin Williams, right? It yeah. happens even with really good yeah. interior defensive good linemen. Call. So. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was down at four or five. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to be like two or three. Yeah. Um, but, I, I mean, 13 is a really high number. I think this could be a peak season out of all these guys. Not only Justin mm-hmm. M and Wilkins, but also maybe Leonard Williams. Well, here's the thing. If you want to go sell Christian Wilkins, buy Zach Sealer. Yeah. Right? It Good was call. 
D tackle three, That's I think, perfect, in our gosh. scoring system. So get the guy who is actually more productive than Christian Williams, who doesn't have the name recognition, probably won't cost you that much. That's true. So let's do edge rushers, Bobo. And did you give your answers? Yes, you did. Didn't I did. You? I okay. did. So let's do edge rushers. And this is probably the juiciest trio of the bunch because it is just three studs. Now, one had a down season, but two were absolutely in fuego for your teams in 2023. Daniil Hunter, Josh Allen, Brian Burns, mm. buy, sell, hold, Bobo. Hunter, Allen, and Burns. I'm going to shake it up from you just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to sell Daniil Hunter. Uh, 29 years old, 18.9 points per game. He played 78% of the snaps uh, for the defense there in Minnesota. Um, this was probably a peak season, right? I mean, but let's play devil's advocate. You could also say the same for Josh Allen. Um, uh, yes. 66 tackles, 17 and a half sacks, 17.5 points per game, 76% snaps there for Jacksonville. But – I'm going to defer to the age here. Even though I like Daniil Hunter, he is only a couple years removed from having a pretty serious neck injury. And I know he's been healthy, and that's great. We hope he stays that way. Um, but I'm going to choose to hold on to the younger guy in Josh Allen. I'll sell to Daniil Hunter, and then I'll just hold Brian Burns. I can understand uh, here your logic behind probably Brian, buying Brian Burns. We talked about that last episode as well. Um, hopefully the new head coaching regime in there gets Brian Burns motivated to some extent to either keep him or um, it's going to be really interesting to see the difference in money between Josh Allen and Brian Burns because I feel like in my opinion as far as like ID they're really similar um, we go to the IDP show.com if you're a paid sub you actually get access to Adam's ranks right now Adam has Brian Burn Burns as the edge 12 He's 25.8 years old, and he has Josh Allen as the edge eight. He's 27 years old. Yeah, so the thing for me, this is just all about really perceived value for Brian Burns. That's mm -hmm. why he's my buy. Uh, we've talked about this on a couple episodes already, but um, 50 tackles, eight sacks, 12.4 points per game, 77% of snaps. Um, I just think that brighter days are ahead for Brian Burns. I did actually try to go out and get Brian Burns for mm. two 2024 third round picks. Mm. The manager no, in the you. XFL said, no, thank you. How did he so, say it though? He said, I value him a lot higher than I'm that. I'm saying accent wise. Yeah, I can't. I'm not going to try the Boston accent <laughs> to, to make Lauren crash his car off a bridge in disgust. <laughs> um, so that's the thing for me is I don't think even if you can't get him for this sort of depressed value we've been talking about, mm -hmm. he's going to cost the least out of these three. Let me ask you I this. Think by far. What's the most you would pay for Brian Burns? Um, I think a 2025 second round pick is probably the most I would give. Would you give a 24 second? No. Too much. Because hmm. 24 second, just a little peek into the rookies. Um, you're looking at maybe a verse, maybe a Dallas Turner, maybe a Latu. Um, mm, I don't know. That's just, tricky. Just because there's, I, I believe brighter days are ahead, but I take that belief right up until about mm -hmm. the, like if it was a late. 2020 sure. for second rounder, Consider it. 210 to 212. I, I think you. about it. Yeah. But that's about where my belief in Brian Burns is kind of rebound mm -hmm. stops. Yeah. I don't want to have to pay more than that to find out if I'm right. Um, now, we'll say Daniil Hunter versus Josh Allen. Both these guys, insane production this season. Hunter, 83 tackles, 16 and a half sacks, 18.9 points per game. Josh Allen, 66, 17 and a half, and 17.5. So, I think you're looking at potential outlier seasons for both of these guys. Yeah. And so the for the question for me is, who do we think has the better chance to regress mm -hmm. back to kind of their typical season performance? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's probably Josh Allen. You're probably right. This was an extreme outlier for Josh Allen. But he has been, I mean, so his first season, 2019, 188 points, 10 and a half sacks. He got hurt in year two, only played eight games, two and a half sacks. Uh, 57.75 points. But then the next two seasons, 21 and 22, he scored the exact same number of points. 207, 207, seven and a half sacks in 2021, six sacks in 2022. And then this was 294.3 off the back of 17.5 sacks. So let's go back also and look at Adam's ranks. Josh Allen in 2023, um, what did we just say he had? 15 point, uh, 17.5 points per game 
in 2022, 12.4 points per game. In 2021, 13.4 points per game. Let's also look at Brian Burns. Brian Burns in 2023. What did we just say here? 12.4 points per game. Yep. In 2023, 15.4 points per game. And then 2021, 12 points per game. So I'm probably with you. I think that Allen regresses to the mean a little bit off of 17.5 points per game, probably down to that 14, 15 points per game category. But I think we also see a bump for Brian Burns back into that 15 points per game. I think so. I would expect him to settle north of like 13 and a half points per game. Flirting with 14 to 15 points per game. My rationale for selling Allen is I think both Daniil Hunter and Josh Allen will regress. Yeah. Closer to like that, you know, I mean, almost 19 points a game and 17 and a half points per game. There's they're probably going to go down the Mm -hmm. most likely scenario. So I think I can sell Allen for a little more Mm -hmm. because he's younger. Right. If he hits free agency, he's going to get a bag. So. I think I can fetch a heftier price for two guys that I see pretty similar. Now, if you want to flip that logic and say, well, I'd rather just hold Josh Allen and sell Daniil Hunter because Josh Allen's younger, I get that too. This is a coin flip for me on these two. Where, uh, Which of these guys or where? I know we're going to do a separate episode talking about this, but any juicy spots just because these are the juicy guys you want to see these guys go? I don't think there's any chance that Josh Allen makes it out of Jacksonville. Really? Yes, there's no chance. Mm. I think he will be there. The decision they have to make is on Calvin Ridley. Because yeah. if they let him go, if they re-sign Calvin Ridley, they now owe the Falcons a second-round pick as opposed to a third-round pick. Mm-hmm. If you use the franchise tag on them to keep your second instead of you know sending that second, yeah. now you can't franchise tag Josh Allen and he walks out the door. Mm-hmm. I think that would be organizational malpractice. So mm-hmm. I just don't see a world in which Josh Allen is not on this team. Mm-hmm. And then Daniil Hunter, I mean, pick any of the yeah. edge rusher needy teams. What if? Atlanta Falcons yeah. come and get this guy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, any of those uh, Washington commanders, they're going to have a ton of cap space. Uh, Chicago Bears. Yeah. I yeah. mean, pair him up with uh, Montez Sweat. That'd yeah. be a hell of a lot of fun. Gosh, absolutely. But I'd love to see him back in Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, especially for Dynasty, mm-hmm. um, continuity is good, mm-hmm. right? Unless the situation was like a Bryce Huff situation where this guy's just not going to get his opportunity or a Bobby Okereke situation, this guy's not going to have a chance to flourish. Yeah. He needs to go somewhere else to get that number one Batman instead of a Robin opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, Daniil Hunter is the guy along this defensive line. I'd like to see him come back. Sounds like they're going to keep the coaching staff the same with Brian Flores there. So mm-hmm. I think keep him in Minnesota. Yeah. A lot of moving parts this offseason for Minnesota. Yeah. We will do a free agency preview episode later in the offseason uh, talking about ideal landing spots as well. And then we'll recap all of the landing spots once the legal tampering period starts on March 11th. And then free agency officially opens on the 13th. Moving on to cornerbacks, Bobo. Mm-hmm. We have Legereus Sneed. Uh, Keyshawn Nixon, <laughs> not Kristen, and, not Christian Nixon, uh, or Kristen Nixon. I think we went to school with her and uh, Kenny Moore. So buy, sell, hold, Sneed, Nixon, and more, Bobo. Man, sounds like a law firm. Yeah. Law firm. Um, gosh, just because of my love for G- Legarius Sneed, I know this is going to be tough. Um, I'm probably with you here, Josh. I'm just going to hold Legereus Sneed. I don't really know that anybody is going to come and buy him right now just because there's kind of that new hotness in Kansas City with Trent McDuffie. Does Kansas City even retain this guy? They have the ability to. I don't exactly know what Kansas City's cap looks like, and I think they have way more needs. They have a lot of expiring contracts. Uh, Maybe they'll have the room then. Um, I saw where they Brad uh, Brad Spielberger of Over the Cap is projecting Chris Jones at, I think, uh, four years, $120 million. Oh so $30 million a year in terms. And Brad is bang on with those projections. Wow. So I would fully expect Chris Jones to get $30 million per year. Golly. So I don't know that they're going to be able yeah. to keep Snead as much as they should. Yeah. That's that's a, I didn't realize that that number was going to be quite as high for Unless Chris Jones. Unless you let Chris Jones walk and – just I mean, try to go get some defensive interior guys. Chris Jones is but in he's here. He's such a prolific pass rusher. He's one of one in that regard, I think. Let's talk about him real quick. 30 tackles on the season, 10 and a half sacks, 29.6 years old, and 12.8 points per game. He's always been super up and down. Oh, yeah. Boom bust for IDP. But, yeah. I mean, we saw him generate the pressure mm-hmm. that caused Josh Allen to yeah. miss that throw in the end zone mm-hmm. in the divisional round. So, 
that's what you pay that guy for. It's interesting too, like a, a team that comes for a guy like Chris Jones. Um, you got to be kind of in a window to really need a Chris Jones, you know, and maybe Chris Jones goes and just gets a bag from Washington because I think they could, throw him a ton of money. I think uh, Chicago makes a ton of sense. But it, it's going to be could interesting see to see his money versus like the other D tackles we mm -hmm. talked about. He'll get Justin the most. M. And I, I know he will, but it almost makes sense for me more in terms of like a GM position to go and grab one of these other guys who mm -hmm. might be a little bit of a discount and are a couple years younger. It seems to me as much as this contract has turned into another disaster yeah. with Buffalo and Von Miller, yeah. it seems like to me, is there a championship contender out there that has some serious cap space, feels like we are one big splash move away on defense from pushing for a Super Bowl, that's a team that I think could make sense for Chris Jones. And Chris Jones was very influential to that Kansas City line this year. Call off this was okay, FAU, whatever, but you could tell Chris Jones was really, I don't know where he was as, uh, as far as like total pressures on the year, but he was awesome. Anyways, let's get back to yes. um, sell LeJarrius Sneed. Um, just because maybe you've seen the best as far as points per game. Still think he's a talented player, um, but maybe him as a Kansas City Chiefs was the best you're going to see. I'm going to hold Keyson Nixon. I'm going to maybe hope that the Green Bay Packers, I don't think that Nixon is going to really ask for a ton. I could see this maybe being more of like a team-friendly type of deal. And I love the punt and kick return. He had 95 punt return yards and 782 kick return yards. He averaged 13 points per game in Big 3 scoring. Took one and to it, the house against the Niners, didn't he? Dude, I mean, and he he won some games there for the Packers. And not only that, but I think we talked about late last offseason that, oh my gosh, what happens if a Marcus Jones or a Keyson Nixon starts playing more defense? And you're seeing that here with Nixon. Uh, Marcus Jones has fell off the face of the earth. I don't he know did. what he's doing. Um, so I'm going to buy Nixon, and then I'm just going to hold Kenny Moore. I think Kenny Moore, we can hear more from the, uh, the, the Colts aficionado over here as far as whether you think you can retain him or not. Uh, but 93 tackles and a half sack is a pretty pretty stellar year there for a corner. Yeah, I'm going to buy Kenny Moore just okay. because I think public perception may still be a little bit down on Kenny Moore uh, just because he had the bad season two years ago. People thought he was just you know a product of that system or whatever or uh, just a flash in the pan, but he obviously came back with a vengeance here, 12.9 points per game. And I do think we'll bring him back. We've got a, a few guys, uh, Braden Smith. We've got Grover Stewart, Kenny Moore, Julian Blackman. So I I think personally we'll bring back Smith, Stewart, and Kenny Moore. I think we'll let Blackman walk probably and because there's going to be some safeties available. And so I'd rather us just go plug. And if you want to let Stewart go, I'm not letting a starting caliber tackle go yeah. in Braden Smith. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, a really good slot corner like Kenny Moore – team leader, sort of face of the franchise a little bit on defense, you know, I, I would prefer to keep that guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to buy Kenny Moore just because I think he'll be back in Indianapolis playing that same role in the Gus Bradley defense. I'm going to sell Keyshawn Nixon just because if he does land somewhere else, and even if he stays in Green Bay, so much of his production and points come from the fact that he has kick and punt return. Yeah. And I just think that is a little tricky year to year to bank on that. We saw that with Marcus Jones, yeah. right? So I think Nixon has a little stronger grip on that than Marcus Jones did in New England, mm -hmm. but it just makes me nervous to bank on kick and punt return yards. And then Legereus Sneed, I'm just going to hold him. Yeah. I'm just going to hold him because I think wherever he ends up, and hopefully it's Kansas City, I think he's going to be one of the better slot corners. And as we know, Bobo, you want those slot defenders because they're closer to the line of scrimmage. They get more tackles. I mean, look at all of these guys north of 70 tackles. Kenny Moore, 93 tackles. That's pretty good. Yep. I don't know that it gets any better for him. But I'm, I'm with you. If the Colts retain him, uh, Kenny Moore still real appealing for Dynasty. Yeah, I have no reason to fade Kenny Moore mm -hmm. if he's back in Indianapolis. So let's talk safeties, though. And this is a juicy bunch as well. Cameron Curl, Buda Baker, Jeremy Chin, buy, sell, hold. I'll kick us off on this one, Bobo. Yes, so I am going to sell Cameron Curl, 84 tackles, one sack, 11.4 points per game. I think he did just enough yeah. to satisfy the Cameron Curl believers out there uh, who think this guy is an elite DB option for IDP. I think he's solid. I think he's somewhere in that top 24 mix for safeties in IDP. Uh, but I think if there's still excitement and buzz and enthusiasm in your league or, you know, in IDP in general for a guy that is just 
the production is a little bit below the buzz, I'm always happy to cash out on those guys. And like I said, Curl is fine, but we can find 11.4 yeah. points per game. So I'm going to sell Cam Curl. I'm going to hold Buda Baker just because – what are you going to get for Buda Baker at this sure. point? And I do think 9.1 points per game, 87 tackles, sort of like, well, we'll talk about the real Brian Burns comp here from the same team in just a second. Mm -hmm. But I think brighter days are ahead for Buda Baker. I think he's going to land. I would love to see him land on one of these teams that's actually pushing for a Super Bowl, mm -hmm. right, rather than just toiling away in Atlanta. Yeah. I would love to see him land somewhere that's going to need some safety help and revive his career and revive his IDP dominance. Mm -hmm. And then I'll buy Jeremy Chin. Mm -hmm. uh, 28 tackles, one sack, 4.1 points per game. Just the physical specimen, we saw flashes of it, and just an awful situation in Carolina. The Both regimes did not want this guy, did not know how to use this guy, so I'll go throw out a fifth round pick to see if Jeremy Chin lands in a situation where it could be a arrow up for this off season. So yeah, buy Jeremy Chin. Uh, Jeremy Chin over the last couple of years, yes, 4.1 points per game this year, but also missed a whole lot of time. Uh, in 2022, averaged 10.6 points per game. And then in 2021, 11.6 points per game. Um, in 2020, he averaged 13.5 points per game. That goes back to his rookie year there in Carolina, what the peaks of Jeremy Chin can look like. And uh, 2020 was pretty special. I don't exactly know what has happened in order for Jeremy Chin to really lose value quite like this. Um, I'll hold Jeremy Chin. Um, Six foot three, 220 pounds. Jeremy Chin. Gosh. And yeah, the point totals, 201 his rookie year, 185, 115, 49. Man, he was just a baller in 2022. So you can't, you mean in uh, 2020? 2020, yes. Yeah. Sorry. So it's, you can't get any lower. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think, it, and if if you pay a fifth and he who washes cares? out of the league in it's a year or two, fifth. who cares? What's the odds You've of hitting got, on your fifth? I think you have ways. a better chance of hitting on Jeremy Chin rebounding yep. than you do on hitting on a fifth round rookie. Yep. So Absolutely. if you got a manager who maybe spent all their picks and wants to get in on the rookie draft action and they have Jeremy Chin, see if you can flip him a fifth to get that guy. Absolutely. I'm going to hold Jeremy Chin. I'll buy Buda Baker um, just because I, I agree with um, what you think as well, Josh, that a team is going to bring in a Buda Baker just like a Philadelphia is going to bring in a Kevin Byard, just like Detroit brought in uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson for a year. They didn't really anticipate him getting hurt, obviously. Um, but I think a good organization, a smart organization that's um, trying to win a championship, a team like a Kansas City, a team yeah, like, see that. Um, you know, um, I don't want to say Philadelphia, what but happens somebody in, similar. What happens in Buffalo? Yeah, if, exactly. If Hyde and Poyer, do those guys stick around? Both I mean, very old. They've got Taylor Rapp still there, but I agree. That would work also. San Francisco, I mean, Green yeah, Bay. There's lots. Right? I mean, there could be a lot of good fits for Buda Baker. Um, Ooh, Dallas would be fun. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're uh, – they've got They're they've bringing got back two of the guys. I think Malik Hooker maybe is a free agent. One of those three is a free agent. I think Wilson and Curse are the ones staying. Then I think you're right, Hooker is leaving. Uh, but, yeah, Cam Curl, meh. I mean, the hype was so high for Cam Curl this year, and it's still high. Um, probably not, not quite what it was preseason, but, yeah, the sell here is Cameron Curl. Uh, 84 tackles, one sack, 11.4 points per game. I'm just – He's fine, exactly like what you're saying, Josh. Even with the the fluidity that is this safety market from one year to the next in IDP, he's somewhere in that one to twenty four. Yeah. I think he's closer to like that twelve to twenty four than he is like a, you know, he's not in the froth. He's 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 just okay. He's uh, he actually had a better season his rookie year. Oh wow! High big three scoring, one hundred seventy eight points in 2020, mm. 145 in 2021, 115 in 2022, and 170. And he played a lot this year. Derek Forrest got hurt pretty early on. Um, I'm not yeah. sure who the other safety was. Yeah, there. we should mention he only played 16 games, mm -hmm. uh, 16 games his entire career, except for 2022 when he only played 12 games. I gotcha. So 115 tackles, a sack, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. So again, this that's solid. Yeah. But I'm I'm happy to sell if the excitement and buzz still exceeds the production. Agree. So let's move to linebacker, and this is probably the hardest one for me 
to suss out here, Bobo. You did a good job putting mm. these together. Let's talk about buy, sell, hold. Devin White, Willie Gay Jr., and Isaiah Simmons. I'm going to let you go first because one of your favorite players is on this list. Okay. let's. Um, Isaiah Simmons' value is so low right now that he has to be the, the let's say, buy. Just because, I mean, a fifth probably gets you Isaiah Simmons at this point. And we talked about it on the last episode that what would have happened if Isaiah Simmons had stayed in Arizona and he had played 90% of the snaps. He would have averaged a whole lot more than 6.3 points per game. And then going into this offseason, the outlook for a team bringing in the seventh pick in the 2020 NFL draft would be a whole lot more. There would be way more GMs paying attention to this guy. But I think that this is the floor for Isaiah Simmons. It's probably this is as bad as it gets. There were just people there in front of him. There were some pretty decent linebackers, and there were some pretty decent safeties. I think he played the whole season there for uh, Wink Martindale, and that's uh, he just didn't play a whole lot. I need to look and actually see what his snap count was on the year, but it had to have been pretty low. But anyway, so we buy Isaiah Simmons. I think we sell Willie Gay. Um, I think we sell Willie Gay with the hype that you know, like a Bobby O'Karake, like one of these guys in the last year or two, Caden Ellis, that his next landing spot is where he's going to really, really take a step. But, I mean, even on what he did this year in Kansas City, which I know he was a little bit injured, but 58 tackles, 8 points per game. I mean, exactly like what you were saying about Cam Curl, we can find 8 points per game. That's nothing. Um, and then I think you hold Devin White. I think of the two guys right there, most people would tell you to go get Willie Gay instead of getting Devin White, but let's let's do what others aren't doing right now. Maybe we've seen the worst of Devin White. It's exactly like what you were saying a minute ago with Jeremy Chin. We saw what 2020 looked like. Was it 2020 or 2019 for Devin White? I think it was 19. It was electric. I mean, he had 11 sacks that year. I don't know how many points per game he averaged in 2019. I don't know if Adam's stats uh, go <laughs> back that far. I feel better, Addy. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I think we maybe just flip the model on its lid a little bit, and while people are selling Devin White, maybe we maybe we acquire him. Yeah, so I'm going to sell Devin White. Okay. Um, just because I'm worried that the end may be coming for him faster than we realize. I'm worried this may be a Jalen Smith, Deion Jones. Bad I know player. he's I know he's younger, um, but you know it just the bottom can fall out quick when guys are not good, and so. Yes, I think it, he is a buy overall for me. But in this exercise, stacked up against these three guys, I would rather buy Willie Gay mm -hmm. because I think Willie Gay um, has maybe – I don't want to say he's a like a better player or has demonstrated more in the league because I think for as bad as Devin White has played recently, he has put more on tape than Willie Gay overall collectively in their careers. But I think that – Willie Gay will have a friendlier market. I've called him like a, you know, the Bobby O'Karake light in terms of what mm. I think he could get this offseason. I, I want to look up and see what uh, Brad Spielberger has him projected for. Well, let me tell you this too. Uh, Willie Gay points per game in 2022 was actually 14.7 points per game. Um, I don't know how many games Willie Gay played this year. I know he missed quite a bit of time. Um, and there was the weirdness that is Drew Tranquil and yep. Leo Chanel. And Tranquil's going to be gone, and and you know now Willie Gay will be able to probably be uh, an LB1 on a team, or does a team bring him in to be kind of a Dre Greenlaw? I don't know. That's, that's yet to be seen. Um, but I agree with your logic there behind uh, Devin White and behind Willie Gay. Yeah, so... I've always been a Willie Gay fan. I think he just hasn't gotten a chance mm -hmm. uh, to really shine there. And you could say, well, it's because he's not that good of a player that he had. The cream has not risen to the top. But I think there have been examples of guys that have gone out of the shadow of better players and played really well mm -hmm. elsewhere. So that's kind of what I'm banking on. I'm not looking at this as like, I'm going to go pay a second yeah. for Willie Gay. If I could get him for a fourth. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I'm not going to pay a third. Probably he's 26 years old. Yeah. He's still young. Yeah. I think he's a good player. I think he's got pass rush upside. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, and then I'll just hold Isaiah Simmons because I don't want to buy him because you said he's at the floor. I'm worried that floor might have a basement beneath it. Sure. Right. And, but I do think much like Jeremy Chin, these are hyper freak athletes mm -hmm. who have been miscast and misused. Mm -hmm. My only concern with, Chin or with uh, Isaiah Simmons compared to Chin is that 
Chin has been moved around, like deep safety, yeah. slot corner, strong safety, in the box, but he's always played safety, mm-hmm. right? They don't know, <laughs> is Isaiah Simmons a safety? Is he a slot corner? Is he a deep safety? Is he a linebacker? Should be playing basketball. I don't – so I just – the fact that we have seen two staffs now, yeah. three staffs now, mm-hmm. not know how to use Isaiah Simmons is what worries me uh, comparatively. But – if you want to take a shot, it's never a bad idea to bet on athleticism mm-hmm. in a sport where that is often a differentiator mm-hmm. of like the upper, upper crust of the NFL is often the freakiest athletes. There's got to be that GM and that organization out there that says, I can fix Isaiah Simmons. I can make Isaiah Simmons 4 3 9, 40 speed work for our team. Um, whether that translates to IDP points or not, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, I wanted to pull up Devin White's 2023 PFF numbers. So pass rush, pass rush grade of 64, tackling grade of 76, but 30 grade in run defense and a 40 overall defensive grade. Um, that's pretty poo-poo. And they're all red. I mean, 2019, all of these are his overall defensive grade, 51 43, 36, 45, 46. This is Devin White? Yes. Yeah. He's just not that good. Yeah. And I worry that with how he's handled this year, like what is he going to get? So I'm looking at Brad Spielberger's uh, projection for Willie Gay. One year, $3.75 million. So like a David Long, Aziz Alshair, one year prove it deal. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he has White projected for. I I bet you it's not a lot. One year, $7 million. Mm. So prove it deal as well. Again, just getting more money because he's put a little more on tape than Willie Gay. You have Simmons. Let's look at Simmons. Uh, let's see here. Simmons. It's hard to believe that Simmons' second contract, he's probably going to make less than he did on his rookie deal. He doesn't even have him in there. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. I don't know. What about you? Did you say David Long mm-hmm. for Willie Gay? Yeah. You think that's about the same of maybe Isaiah Simmons? Um, I could see... I think it'll be a similar contract. I think if a team wants to take a chance on an Isaiah Simmons, it'll be one year's two to three million. Put him somewhere. Where's Devin White going? Boy, that is a great question. Um, you have I landing mean, spots for any of these guys? I haven't really thought through it yet, but there are like linebacker needy teams, right? Like the, the Eagles come to mind, mm-hmm. right? The Cowboys come to mind. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, <laughs> Pittsburgh, Washington, Oakland, or Las Vegas. I the mean, Rams. The Rams, I could see, I could see Las Vegas, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. uh, you got Big Bob Spillane there, Divine Diablo. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it'll be. Who, who are the dumb teams, right? Yeah. Who are the teams? Because I don't, I don't see like smart organizations. Like I, I can't see the Eagles bringing in Devin White. Yeah, look what Chicago did last year. Yeah, uh, look who what the Atlanta dumbs? brought in. You know, paid a lot of money. Uh, Isaiah Simmons, please come to the Rams. I would love that. There you go. Can't that would be you. You jersey. would have to get an Isaiah Simmons 100%. jersey if that happens. So let's wrap up here with some more edge rushers, and uh, this is an intriguing trio. Not as juicy as the other one, but some fun names here mm-hmm. to toss around. Buy, sell, hold. Bryce Huff, Marcus Davenport, and Jonathan Grenard. Bob, I'll let you kick us off because I know you're a big Grenard fan. Yeah, I am. So Bryce Huff really was on the up and up there towards the end of the season. 28 tackles, 10 sacks on the season, 9.6 points per game. He played 42% of the snaps in 2023, which had to have been pretty influential towards later on the season is when he started getting a whole lot more playing time. Um, So Bryce Huff, let's just hold him. Um, If you've got a dum-dum who doesn't know what they have, then maybe it's worth, maybe it's worth the buy. I just, I see Bryce Huff much like I see someone who has a Kalaja Kansi. You don't you think just they're happen gonna be upon Bryce, to Huff. Bryce Huff? I think I think there's gonna be some people that are dumb dumbs. There's gonna be two out of ten, maybe. But I think like eight of those ten people that are rostering Bryce Huff right now, they probably know what they have. You think so? Yeah. I mean Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. It it just it's it's a good litmus test of who knows ball if they're holding to Bryce Huff. Yeah. I will say he is the eighteenth ranked free agent by PFF, and mm-hmm. Brad thinks he is getting three years fifty million dollars. Sixteen point six seven per year with thirty five million guaranteed. Hey, I mean I love Big it. Big time buy. I've said all along I think he's this year's Uchina Nuosu. Mm. So if you can get him, now I'm not gonna go pay a second for him. I sort of like the uh, Brian Burns deal. I'll go pay a couple thirds for Bryce Huff. Yeah. Sure. Why would you not? Um so yeah, he is my buy as well. Um Marcus did, Davenport. Is my sale. Yeah, me too. Just uninterested. I'm not interested. 8.1 points per game. Yeah. 
Um, I know he was banged up most of the season. Bryce Huff is 25 years old. He's he's smacking his prime, dude. Yep. I mean, this is the next big thing. And I think most of fantasy football kind of uh, players in the community and IDP managers are getting a hip to Bryce Huff, mm-hmm. but see if you can catch that tail end of the wave that hasn't caught on yet. That's a good call. To the fact that this guy is about to blow up. So then we're going to sw- uh, flop here. I'm going to buy Jonathan Grenard, and you're going to yeah, hold him. I'm just going to hold him. Yep. I think he's an ascending player. Um, I heard on the underdog football show and go check that out folks. If yeah. you haven't yet, uh, Josh and Hayden talk through these rankings, the top 10 at every position, including defense. And mm. they mentioned that Jonathan Grenard, I think it was a metric that looked at maybe pressures, QB hits and sacks, or maybe TFLs, QB hits and sacks. It was some cumulative measure mm. and Jonathan Grenard this season had more than his past seasons combined. Wow. So that's the D'Amico Ryan's yeah. effect. I don't think with the amount of money that Houston has, they're letting this guy get out the door. Yeah. Um, I think that Jonathan Grenard is an ascending player, and I am more than happy to hold him. I think that that's the reason he's a hold or a buy, just because I think that, like you're saying, he stays there in Houston. Because of all these guys. He was, I think, the better option. I mean, 15.6 points per game. He yeah. was clearly the better player for IDP than Will Anderson this season. But in Dynasty, everyone's going to be hornier for Will Anderson Mm -hmm. and not going to want to give you the same kind of price for Jonathan Grenard, although I think they should. And Bryce Huff is not really needed for the Jets. They have a lot of young, you know, Jermaine Johnson. They have uh, uh, Nolan Smith also coming up. Um, Well, that's Philadelphia. Uh, that's right. Yes. When, who did you say? Will McDonald. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Got Will McDonald right. and Jermaine Johnson, I think, will be the two guys there. Um, uh, Michael think, Clemens. They'll have Clemens. I think they'll cut Carl Lawson loose. Okay. Uh, I think they'll. I Time think they'll to... end up cutting him, and then yeah, they'll let Bryce Huff walk as well. It's still a fun defensive line, but um, yeah, Bryce Huff's probably going to get a bag, and then Jonathan Grenard maybe stays at home. I don't know who will bring in Marcus Davenport. I'm. Uh, neither of us are interested, so I don't really care where he goes. Yeah, it's not – he's just one of those guys. I'm just tired of it. Yeah. You know? We've seen it. We keep – this is the year. This is the mm-hmm. team, and mm-hmm. it's just not going to happen. I agree. And I watch it'll happen. It'll be him and Joey Bosa, and Adam will have both. <laughs> Get better soon, Addy. We miss you, baby. So hopefully you all yeah. enjoyed this episode. Uh, coming up after the break, we are going to have Johnny the Greek with Scott Bogman doing – conference championship idp bets if you're watching on youtube the link will be in the description for that video but babo buy sell hold always a fun exercise if you're watching this on youtube uh drop your picks in the comments who would you like to buy sell or hold of any of these groupings um and this was fun we'll talk about rookies next week i know you and addy are digging in but uh before we get into the rookie talk this felt like a nice little kind of dip of our toe into the free agent waters. I'm buying me, I'm selling Adam, I'm holding you. Thank you. Let's hold each other as we wrap up this episode. But y'all enjoy the football this weekend. We've got two awesome games coming up, Chiefs, Ravens, and 49ers, Lions. So savor it, folks. We've only got three games left. I'm not counting the Pro Bowl, and you shouldn't either. (laughs) Uh, So enjoy it. We will be back, like we said, next week talking about a rookie primer. And Jeff will be back as well talking about IDP Madness draft strategies. Who wins this weekend? I think Ravens and Lions. Yep, let's go. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't want another Chiefs 49ers rematch. I'm with you. Let's Let's, go. That's enough uh, Taylor. Let's go with Ravens Lions. I think that'd be so much fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. So enjoy it, folks. We'll be back next week. But until then, y'all take care, and we'll see you soon. It's the IDP show. Now you know.